Mariana, thank you for accepting this interview for Perfiles del Paso Fino. Hi, thank you for having me. Let's start off by you telling me when your horse lifestyle began. So it began with my mom. She had um, horses when she was younger. And she, she, when my sister was born, she had the horses also. My sister actually started in Walcorto lead line. Then my sister, when she was probably around like eight years old, she got out of the horses. So my mom, you know, what's the point of having the horses if she's not into it? Right. So when I was born, my mom didn't have horses. So she had her horse stuff inside the laundry room and I would get it and put it on like chairs and act like I'm riding the horse. And then my mom was like, you know what? It's time to get back into horses because it's obviously in her blood and she loves it. So I started riding when I was probably like three. And I I didn't stop up I didn't start off with Pasofinos. I started off with quarter horses, um, reining. I did reining, jumping, um, like barrel racing for fun, um, like dressage for fun, cutting. I did a little bit of everything before I came into the Pasofinos. Then when we moved to Ocala in 2014, we bought a Pasofino from United Pasofino, and he was a stallion, so I was not able to show him, and he was a little cuckoo, so. <laughs> so, um, so I started riding him at home, and I wasn't able to show him because I wasn't 13 at the time. So, then I was, when I came to Ali's farm, to United Pasofino, I was like, when I tried out my horse, I bought a mare here, and I was like, when I come back in the car, you call that riding. I'm used to post trotting and all that stuff and, you know, not just sitting there and, you know, just sitting there and holding the horse back. Right. But after, obviously, all, after all these years, I understand that there's a lot more to do than just sitting there. And now I'm two-time Grand National Champion and um, Youth of the Year, 2020 Youth of the Year, and it's that's my beginning of the journey there. What has been... Some of the most memorable horses in your life. My most memorable horse, what is my current horse, is um, Fantastico, and I've just done so much with him. He's taken me to where I am, and we've just we're the perfect duo, as what everybody says. Um, he's he's def he's an all-around horse. I take him trail riding. Um, he's actually a Fino horse now, top five Fino stallions. Uh -huh. So he, I can take him in Fino and I can win. I can take him in Pleasure and I'll win. And I'll take him in a trail ride and he'll do everything for me. And I can just take him in the water and he loves water. He just, he does everything. And um, I've just, he's been, I've accomplished a lot with him. Because of him, I basically really got you through the year because I've done a lot of stuff with him, mm -hmm. exhibitions and all that stuff, and it's gotten my name out there. And at na at Spectrum, for after four years of riding horsemanship, I was able to take home the grand championship wow. in Spectrum of 2021. And it's just, I've always been in that class and I've always gotten reserve. So <laughs> I was in tears when they were like, just didn't call my number for reserve. <laughs> wow, I know. <laughs> and it's just crazy how much we've been through and how much he's done for me and how much I've done for him. And I wouldn't be anywhere with it without him. How long have you had him? I've been writing, I've been writing him since he was three. He's turning seven in June. Mm -hmm. We officially owned him for about two years now. So I've been writing him for four years. And he seems to be the perfect example of the versatility of a yes. Pasofino. Yes. He can do everything. He can, like what I was saying, he's Fino, and I can go and take him in a can in a Largo, a Corto, and a canner. I can canner in a trail ride with him, and he'll, he's the perfect definition of a Pasofino that can do everything. And more so for being a stallion, because yes. I know you know people that don't know Pasofinos very well have a misconception that they're unmanageable. Yes horses. What has been one of the most memorable acts of kindness a horse has shown you, I would assume that would be with Fantastico? Yes. He, well Fantastico and my gelding, his name is Chacoli, that he 
pours his heart out for me, both of them do, that they'll, they'll be in like a not good mood to show and we'll still do great, we'll still place and top two at least and they've just poured their heart out for me and they'll do anything for me. That's nice. Tell me a little bit about your trail riding experience. My trail riding experience? I just, I just love trail riding. It's like, it's like everything is just like me and the horse are one. And it's just, I drop my reins when I'm in trail riding and Fantastico will just walk his way because he knows the trail already. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's so peaceful. And it's, a lot of possums can't really do trail riding sometimes, especially a female horse because they're too hyper because mm -hmm. they won't walk. Right, <laughs> right, right. So... But yeah, he's perfect for trail riding. I love taking him trail riding and doing everything with him. That's great. Who would you say have been your greatest influencers, your greatest teachers in Paso Fino? My first person would be my mom. Um, I wouldn't be anywhere in equitation at least because um, she has been a big equitation trainer for me. Um, my first trainer was Carlitos Figueroa and he had a big impact. He he pushed me and pushed me, and my equitation wasn't very good when I first started. I would drop one of my hands, and he would just train me so much. And then um, um, when I didn't have a trainer after Carlitos, um, actually, I got um, Jorge Pineda. Mm -hmm. he, uh, um, he gave me a big opportunity with a Dali mare that, you know, like Dali, Dali babies are kind of like crazy. And I would like, I started writing her and she taught me a lot also because there's, I'm used to riding horses that you have to, you know, move them, they're, they, they're, yeah, they're mm -hmm. not automatic. So she, I, you couldn't kiss her, she, you would kiss her and she'll <laughs> lose it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I learned a lot with her and thank you for Betu for that. And, um, I've, I've had a lot of trainers and I've taken them bit by bit and I actually train my own horses. When they're not in training for showing, I train them at home, I ride them at home. and um, I've So I've had a lot of trainers and I've taken bit by bit by each of them and added it to my own training. What would you say is the greatest influence to the confidence that you have? At your age, to feel the confidence to train your horses when they're in between trainers or when they're not getting ready for a show, what gives you the majority of your confidence for that? Um, that I could say I could do it. I don't need someone to help me. I, I can do it myself. I don't need to pay someone to do it when I can learn how to do it and do it myself. And I can, that's just like someone asked me, oh, who's your trainer? I train my own horse. And that's just a big, they're like, oh my God, wow. Look how, ho how good her horse is, and she's been the one to really train her because Fantastico, he, he's never had a real trainer until like now. He's always been like, you know, just ridden the trainer, just rides him for, you know, a couple minutes. And I brought him home, and I would ride him every day, and I've turned him to the horse that he really is. And then mm -hmm. just trainers tuning him up before the show. I would think that it's a mixture of three things the quality of your horse. Mm -hmm your innate ability and the quality of the trainers you have, and it's something you should be very proud of. <laughs> what do you think have been your most valuable resources in order to be the writer that you are today? Um, coaches telling me what I'm doing wrong. And if I'm being videoed, I would watch the video over and over again to see what I'm doing wrong. And especially for equitation, you know, like if you're either practicing with a mirror, watching yourself, or watching the video, or the coach telling you what to do, um, I would for sure say, especially videoing when I'm by myself, I would video myself and practice and see what I'm doing wrong. What do you think would make the Pasofino Horse World better um, entity? I would say everybody to have more horsemanship, to better sportsmanship, I can say. Um, to everybody come together when they win first and second, like, oh my God, good job, you know. Like, I bet you won, but, you know, like, encouraging people. You know, we have a lot of people that, you know, are just selfish and they don't care and they know that they're going to win and, you know, they don't even say congratulations to the other people. 
and I would think just better sportsmanship for everybody and um, some of our judges are not very educated so and I think they should get more educated spend the time and having better quality of judges and spending yeah spending a lot of time of knowing what you're doing from the beginning and yeah I would, first the big one would be sportsmanship on everybody as a youth writer, uh, you obviously admire others mm -hmm. and their examples that are out there for youth, but a youth writer your age is an example for others. What do you think would be one of the most important things that you would want to pass on to the younger writers out there? Showing that it's not always about winning first place. It's it's about having a nice family. This is our family. We're a very small family. We're not like other breeds that are very big. We're, very, we're a, a big, small family. That's right. That we should always be together and always be friends with everybody. And it doesn't matter about just always winning. You should always just have great sportsmanship with everybody, congratulating, helping friends out, and all that stuff. And I would say it's not always about winning. It's It's about more quality and having in each other. Now I've been told that you're one of the biggest supporters of promoting the breed out here in the Ocala region. So can you tell me what you would show as one of the first qualities that you would discuss about a Pasofino when you're introducing this breed, if you were to be a pioneer? I would say think of it as a regular horse, but an extra gear. Mm -hmm. They can walk, they can trot, they can canter, they can do everything. They can go jumping, they can go barrel racing, they can do everything, but just think of it as an extra gear that you can have that smoothness that you can do. You, It's, per, it's the perfect horse. You're, it's, it's, a, it's a horse in one but an extra gear that you could, um, that the horses that you could drink a glass of wine and it won't fall, that you don't have to be worrying about post trotting. I mean, like, mm -hmm. my calves would hurt so much when I would be post trotting for, you know, like at least like 30 minutes. And you just, you can do anything on them. They're just a regular horse with an extra gear. Is there anything else that you would like to share about your experience? For example, I, for one, I'm curious about uh, the other breeds that you had ridden before in comparison to Pasofino. At the beginning, you said, you didn't feel like the it first time you writing, rode one, yeah. it was like riding, that's all. But right now, in comparison to the other activities that you had done with other breeds. Mm -hmm. You, it's actually a lot more in this breed of what I think of it is. That, and the other breeds, all you have to worry about, like Western Pleasure, you have to worry about the horses going slow and the horses head down and barrel racing, you have to make sure it's going fast and turning right. This you have to make sure the horse is in gait. You have to make sure that it's not looking sloppy. You have to make sure it's collected. You have to make sure that it's it's not going to do something like wrong. It's a lot of power in one little tiny horse, and you just have to like keep on, you know, like on top of it that it's not going to do something wrong. And, and all the while not lose your posture. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Handling that little tiny horse with so much brio and then keeping your equitation, that's for sure. Liliana, what do you think you would like to see more of in Pasofino? I would like to see more youth for more opportunity. We have, especially in the Ocala region, um, we have very limited youth, including myself. We probably only have four. So it's very good now that we've dropped down the prices to, I believe, um, when it's a local show, um, $20.00. And then now, since it's a big show for Xavienza, it's 50, and then championship is always free. I think children can't compete because it's some some people, um, when they run out of horses, it's in the thousands. And I sometimes that's very hard for parents to pay for that when they just want their youth to have, their child to have fun and um, enjoy themselves. And, you know, instead of staying home and playing video games, they're out doing a sport. And you know that's not going to ca cause them trouble. How would our breed continue without youth riders? Our youth is our future, and just charging so much just for like a five-year-old to just try out a horse and see if they like this, and just charging the thousands is just kind of 
crazy just for someone just wanting to get into the breed and especially a youth rider so we can have more youth for our future. There's more than to competing in our breed. There's trail riding, there's um, you can be an ambassador to our breed, you can give out the ribbons. Then outside of the competition we have exhibitions and we also have youth clinics also and equitation clinics and mature clinics but what the most important clinic is youth because how are we going to have no future without youth. We want people to come in and enjoy our breed and say oh my god look like come to this hunter jumper show and like just walk up to someone and like oh my god have you ever tried a Pasofino? Like that is like the most best breed that you can ever ride. And now in Ocala we have more opportunity to expose our breed. We're actually having a show at the World Equestrian Center where that's we're actually going to be the first Pasofino show. They show the hunter jumpers there and the Western Pleasure Horses there. And, um, we're going to be able to just walk up and they're, they're going to be able to see how much this breed means to us. And just we want to make our family bigger. It's always better to have bigger. <laughs> Who has been the most influential person in your horse career? My mom. She has been my number one supporter since the beginning. She got me into the horses and just, I look on the side of the ring and she's right there next to me, walking next to me and telling me what I'm doing wrong, what I need to fix, and I would say my mom for sure. What is the most important thing that you do with your horses? Companion. I would, companion for sure. I should be able to I should call them and they should come running to me and we can just, I don't need a lead rope and he'll just follow me. Like I companion and that trust in each other. What is the thing you like the most about horses? That they'll do anything for you. They'll, it's, it's hard to describe to a non-horse person that they're my best friend. It's that they, you can pull out your emotions and they'll be there for you. <laughs> like it's, like how they say it's dogs are man's best friend, it's horses are a woman's best friend. They, they'll listen to you, they'll be there for you, they won't, you know, go talk crap about you, or probably, but <laughs> they'll, they'll be there and listen for you, and, it's, and, they, feel, and they feel your emotions. So. What is something that you want people to know or remember about you? My great... I always, when I'm in the ring and I'm first and second when some, with someone and I'll always walk up to them and shake their hand and say congratulations. I just, I want to be remembered of always being that one friend to everybody in the ring. Is there a quote related to the horse world that you always say or enjoy? Um, when I don't do well or I'm just having a hard time, I always say to myself, make your comebacks bigger than your setbacks. Great. Liliana, thank you so much for spending this time to share your story with Perfiles del Paso Fino. I'm so happy Perfiles del Paso Fino had me today. <laughs> thank you.